Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome to another C++ and game tutorial. Today we're going to be learning about multidimensional arrays, which you are going to need in the next challenge, so it's good that you pay attention right now. So we already know about single dimensional arrays. For instance, we made our item shop where we said int player inventory, and then we had the size, I'll say 6. And then we set it equal to the initial values within an initialization list, so we could do all zeros or something like that. And that'll be an empty inventory, all zeros. If we wanted to have a kitten somewhere, we put a one or, or something like that. So here's a single dimensional array. If we take a look at a little graph of it here, this is what it looks like when we think about it. It looks like just a, a, a six squares where you could have like a zero and then a zero. And then if you had a kitten, you would have a one and then the rest would be zeros or something like that. That's what a single dimensional array looks like. But what if we want it to look like this? This is a multi-dimensional array. So for instance, what if we're trying to make like a checkerboard or something? We want to have like a red piece here, a red piece here, black piece here, or something like that. What we need is a multi-dimensional array. And what that is is basically just instead of having one array that is that has six elements in it, we have six arrays that have six elements in it. And we can conveniently store them uh, like this. So let's say we want to make our array a... 2 by 6 or 6 by 2, whichever. We want two rows and six columns. The way we do that is we write the rows first, like this, and then the columns after. So whenever you want a multi dimensional array, you just add another pair of square brackets. This will be a two dimensional array. We could even make a three dimensional array if we wanted to, like if we wanted to make a Minecraft game or something where you have blocks, but we just want squares. We want a two dimensional array. So this is going to make a two by six array. And if we want to initialize it like this, we have to do something a little different. We have to initialize each row. So this is one row. We actually have two rows. So all we're going to do is copy this, put a comma, and then paste it again. And that's both rows. And then we have to, we have to surround this thing in uh, curly braces like that. So now this is going to initialize our 2D array. So let's actually make a checkerboard. Let's print out a checkerboard to the screen. So let's make a checkerboard class. So class checkerboard. This is going to be our little checkerboard class and we'll make an object with it. So let's go ahead and write public and then private. And the private variables, one, the variable we're going to be storing is a checkerboard two-dimensional array. So let's actually use a char array. Remember we can make an array out of anything and the reason I want to use chars is so we can use like stars for black spaces and like spaces for red spaces or something like that. So char board and it's an 8x8 eight eight array. Checkerboards are 8x8. Eight eight. Now we can't unfortunately say equals here. Whenever you're making a class you can't do something like int a equals 5. That doesn't work. You can't initialize things like that. You have to actually initialize them from calling functions. So right now when we put a comma here all of these variables which is 8x8 eight eight, all of them are going to be uninitialized. So we have to make a function that actually creates the board. So we're going to say void uh, init board. Now init stands for initialize. You could also type initialize, but I'm just calling it init because that's a common way to do it and it makes it a little smaller to type. So this function is going to set up our board and what we want to do is for now, uh, for now what we want to do is, I think I have, here we go, for now what we want to do is just do like uh, the white and black spaces. So we could say, uh, we'll say a white space is a star and a black space is a space. So we just want to alternate each row, black, white, black, white, something like that. And then we can worry about actually placing down the pieces. So if we want to do that, we, we could just go through one at a time and set each of the variables like board 0, 0 equals white, which is a star, but that's going to take forever. Instead, we can be clever and use for loops, and then what we're going to want to do is use something called the modulus operator. So let's actually, sh I'll show you what the modulus operator does. Let's take a, let's actually just go into the main function, and I'll show you what it, what it does. Let's have an int a equals 5, and then an int b equals 4. Now, to use modulus division is what it's called, we'll see out and we'll say a modulo b and l. And let's actually print that out and I'll let you sh see what it does. Now the modulo operator is this little percent sign right here and I need a system pause. There we go. Oh, no. Semicolon after. Let's go ahead and print this out. So this is a modulus division with a and b and we get a 1. 
The reason we get a 1 is because what modulus division is with this percent sign right here is it's whenever you take a number A, divide it by B, and then get the remainder. So you would only do this with integers. If we take A, which is 5, and divide it by 4, 4 doesn't evenly go into 5. If you've ever done like long division on paper in elementary school or something, you always have like remainder 1, remainder 2 at the end or something like that. So in this case, 5 divided by 4 is going to be remainder 1, so we're going to get a 1 here. If this was a 7, we're going to get a remainder of 3. Let's print that out and see. There we go. At the top left here, it shows we have a remainder of 3. So that's what modulus division is. And the important thing about this, the reason this is going to help us out, is because we can use modulus division to determine if we are on an odd row or an even row. If we have int a equals 3, Whenever we type A modulo 2, that's going to tell us if we're on an odd or an even row. If modulo 2 is 0, for instance, 2 divided by 2 has no remainder. If modulo 2 is 0, that means we are on an even row. However, if we type a 3 here, 3 modulo 2 is going to give us a remainder of 1. And 1 is an odd number. If we make this a 5... We're also going to get an odd number, a 6, it's going to be an even number, just because we're using this modulus operator. Anytime you have modulo a number, the numbers you can get from this statement are only, uh, for instance, for 2, we can only get a 0 or a 1. If it was modulo 3, we could get a 0, a 1, or a 2. So we're going to use modulo 2 to determine if we're on an odd or even row, and if we're on an odd or even column. And that's how we're going to do our little uh, knit board here. So let's go ahead and call, let's go ahead and create a checkerboard down here. Let's make checkerboard, checkerboard. And then let's go ahead and call checkerboard.initboard. And then we're going to make a function to print it, checkerboard.printboard. So let's make a void print board function too. Void print board. And that'll be a really easy function. We'll write that in a minute. So first thing we want to do is initialize the board. So we're going to use for loops. For int i equals 0, i is less than 8, because that's the size of the board, i++. Plus plus. And we're actually going to nest for loops. We're going to do another for loop inside of this for loop. The reason is, what we want to do is we want to take our two-dimensional array, and we want to visit the nodes in a certain order. We want to visit the graph. We want to start here, and then go here, then here, then here. And then we want to come down to the next row and keep going. We want to go through like this. If we just use one for loop that goes through eight, that'll give us the first row. But if we put another for loop inside, so if we do a for loop from zero to eight and then another for loop from zero to eight inside, that'll cause us to iterate through the entire board one at a time because the first for loop is going to iterate through the rows and the second uh, for loop, the one on the inside, is going to iterate through the columns. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you. It's probably a little confusing. So this i right here, let's actually change this to the y, because on the outside of for loop, we are iterating through this first spot right here, which is the rows. And that you could think of as the y position. And then the inside, we'll do another for loop, for int x equals 0, x is less than 8. And this is going to iterate through the columns, which is this second part right here. Now, the way we determine if it's a white or a black space is based on the if the row or column are even or odd. So let's go ahead and take a look at our little checkerboard here. There we go. So for instance, on the first row, we're starting with a white, but on the second row, we're starting with a black. So all we have to do is have an if statement. If, let's think about the first row. If x modulo 2, so if the remainder of x divided by 2, if that is equal to 0, that means we are on an even row, okay? So an even row, in this case, is going to be black, right? Because 2, 4, 6, 8 is black. And whenever it's black, we're going to say that it's equal to a space. So we're going to say board, and then y, x. This is how you access elements. Just like in a one-dimensional array, you just type the elements in the square brackets. Board y, x equals, and we'll say black is a space. Otherwise, it's an odd number. So we'll say else here, and we'll say board y, x equals a star. Star is white. Now this isn't quite correct, but I'll go ahead and print it out and show you why it's not correct, and then we'll enhance this to be, to be actually correct. So for the void print board, we're just going to 
loop through the board. So 4 int y equals 0, y is less than 8, y plus plus, and then another inner for loop, 4 int x equals 0, x is less than 8, x plus plus. And we're going to do a C out board y x. So this will print that part of the board to the screen. Now we want to actually do a new line after each row. So after each iteration of this for loop right here, remember this inner for loop is the one that goes through each and every row. So the inner for loop is going to go through here, and then it's going to be done. And then the outer for loop, the y loop, is going to increment by 1. And then we're going to go through again on the inner for loop. So each time we go through that inner for loop, we actually want to print out a new line. So we're just going to do right here after it, see out end L. All right, so now we should be able to init the board. It's not going to be quite correct. And then we'll print the board, and let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to run it. There we go. So we zoom in, and it's kind of like a checkerboard pattern. As you can see, we have eight spots. It doesn't look perfectly square because that's just the way the command prompt works. But as you can see, we have, uh, let's see, we have eight uh, stars going from top to bottom and eight spaces from top to bottom. And then we have a space, star, space, star, space, star. It's actually kind of hard to read this. Let me change it so that, oh, God, this keeps happening. Let me actually change it so that instead of using a space, because that's kind of hard to read, let's use a period. So a period refers to a white space. A star refers to a black space. Well, I didn't change anything. Oh, I did. I accidentally typed a V in. All right, so let's go ahead and run it so you can actually see what's wrong. There we go. This looks much better. Now you can see the checkerboard. It's, it doesn't look dimensionally correct, but it is. It's 8 by 8. So what's wrong is we have... What is that? White, black, white, black, white, black. But each row is like that. So we're, we're really close. All we have to do to fix this is to change it so that instead of doing x modulo 2, we say x plus y modulo 2. So if we're on the first row, it's going to add, uh, or if we're on, we're on the very beginning row, y is going to be equal to 0. So it's not going to change anything, so it's going to be the same. If we're on the second row, which is y is equal to 1, we're going to be adding 1 to this variable, which is going to mean if before it was even, now it's odd. If we're on the second row, y is going to add 2 to it. But whenever we add 2 to something and we're doing modulo 2, it's not going to change it. So we're just going to get 0 again. So that's probably a little confusing. You don't actually really need to know this for the next challenge, but uh, hopefully you kind of understood it. Now if I zoom in here, you can see we're properly getting the checkerboard pattern like before. And then we could write another function that actually places down the pieces if we're clever enough. I urge you to go ahead and try to do that. That'd be a good way to get some good practice with a multidimensional array. Stick, uh, stick uh, with me for the next episode. We're going to be learning a little bit more about classes, and then we're going to finally go on to our uh, challenge episode. Thanks, guys.